Good morning all. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Great to see you all this morning. Last day of July. Hallelujah. Into the silly season. That's from the first. Great. We're here today to worship the Lord, to hear from his word. And that's going to be bring in the word later. We're going to pray. We're going to read the scriptures. We're going to sing. We're going to enjoy fellowship together. And we're going to bless one another in Jesus' name. Does that sound good? Hallelujah. Welcome to those who are visiting today. Nice to have Steve and Jackie with us from County Slip. And anyone who's a visitor, great to see you. I'm looking around the room, see if there are. And for our regulars and those who are part of the church family here, great to have you. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Hallelujah. Okay, you'll wake up as time goes on, I'm sure. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I say it every Sunday, and I'm going to say it again. The Word of God. It is our life, our breath. It's what we, it's our benchmark for our lives. We don't just read it on a Sunday morning or recite it during the week. We live by it. It is our yardstick. It is the plumb line of our lives. And I would encourage you, as John said, our brother John, a few Wednesdays ago, that don't just snack on the Bible. Make it your life. Make it the encyclopedia. Make it the instructions. What does it stand for? B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Yeah? Yeah? Everything you hear, even from the pulpit, what you hear on the news, what you hear online from a Christian preacher in America, whatever, make sure you go back to the Word of God and make sure it lines up with what's written in this book, not just any book, but 66 books inspired by the Holy Spirit. So we hold the Bible in the highest regard and we hold the name of the Lord in the highest regard. He is king, and his name is Jesus. So I'm going to read from this most precious book, as I said, inspired by the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to read Psalm 36 this morning. Psalm 36. I'm going to read the whole of the psalm, and this is from the NIV version. Psalm 36. This is from David, the servant of the Lord. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes, they flatter themselves too much to detect or hate their sin. The words of their mouths are wicked and deceitful. They fail to act wisely or do good. Even on their beds, they plot evil. They commit themselves to a sinful course and do not reject what is wrong. This is brilliant. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains. Your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. This is beautiful too. With you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. This is the word of the Lord. That wonderful expression there, I mean, it's all wonderful. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. You give them drink from your river of delights. Our God is so gracious, so generous, and so kind. And elsewhere in Scripture it says, No eye has seen no ear has heard, it hasn't entered your heart what God has prepared for those who love him. One day, 
we will experience the fullness of that river of delights and that fountain of life. I pray today, and that's a prayer of all the leadership here and everyone of this house, that if you don't yet know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation for you. We are here to ensure that you hear the gospel, you respond in repentance and faith, come to know Jesus, and be assured that your sins are forgiven and that your name is written in heaven. Amen? That's the purpose of this morning. There might be some birthday songs and some gifts and some lightheartedness, but we are here to ensure that you are secure in Christ for all eternity. It's a heavy message, isn't it, for a welcome? Hallelujah. That's why we're here. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to say thank you. We come to you this morning with a sense of holy fear and awe and wonder. You are almighty God. There is no one like you. And Lord, as we approach you this morning to bring our songs to you, as we bring our tithes to you, as we bring our offerings to you, as we stand before you with our hands lifted high and our voices lifted, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. There's no other way for us to approach you. It's only through the name and through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are able to come. And we thank you, Lord, Father, that you made a way for us where there was no way that while we were still sinners Christ died for us and that's how you demonstrate your love for us in that that while we were still sinners Jesus Christ died for every one of us that we might be reconciled brought back to you Lord God that we would know the joy of sins forgiven and know that our names are written in heaven in the Lamb's book of life we give you, Lord God, all the glory and all the praise for the wonder of your salvation that you accomplished when Jesus died, was buried and rose again. Father, thank you this morning that your mercies are new and fresh every morning. Great is your faithfulness to each one of us. The very breath that we have in our lungs this morning is from you. We've just read you preserve both people and animals. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. We praise you for your faithfulness, Lord God. We praise you for your generosity, your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness. Lord, your love reaches to the heavens. And we praise and thank you this morning for every good and perfect gift is from you. We thank you for your indescribable gift, your Son, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, the only way, Father, to you. Lord, we remember kings and queens and authorities. We pray for them, those who govern this land. Lord, we pray that you would give them wisdom, that they would continue to make laws that allow and help the preaching of the gospel in this land. Lord, we lift them to you. And Lord, we lift everybody in this congregation associated with this house who is struggling with sickness, or illness, Lord, you know them by name. That this morning you would draw near to them, Lord. You would comfort them in their sickness and bring healing and restore them to us physically in this building where they may meet corporately for prayer and fellowship with one another, but Father, with you. Father, we just give thanks. And as we come now, Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. And we do all of this, Lord God, in and through the name of our Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing to him, Jesus, the King of kings, Lord of lords. Hallelujah. It is indeed all about Jesus. Always was, always is, and always will be about him. As you well know, many of you, and if you're a guest... Then we celebrate birthdays here. Favorite part of the meeting for most people, they come from the front and get a birthday song sung over them. <laughs> True. <laughs> so we've got a couple of this week, actually. So we've got two in Zion and two in this church family, and they're all on Tuesday, the 2nd of August. Hmm. So, right, so we've got two in the Philippines. We'll come on to that in a minute. Zion Christian Center. Maria Isabel Bustata. It's close. C plus on that one. 
Um, Sende Remite, Remitre, again, C minus on that one. Not bad. Um, v Goodhind, is she here today? No, she's not, bless her. And Lynn? Mervyn Lynn? You here? Hey! We've got one out of four. Come on up. We're going to sing a birthday blessing over you. Only you? Anybody else? Anybody brave enough? Anyone got a rollover from last week, the week before, the week before that? No? Oh, come. Who? Kaylee. Yeah, you qualify. Come on. Come on. Come and stand with your sister, Lynn. Come on. Oh, were you feeding? Were you? Ooh. Blame your sister for that. Right, let's sing a birthday blessing over you guys. thing is, Kaylee, you can have it sung with you next Sunday as well. <laughs> All right, okay, so well, well, we got in there then, that's good, good. Before the children go up, we want to um, just, well, we're a church that likes to bless. We've been blessed in Jesus, haven't we? With every spiritual blessing. So we want to bless. And over the last couple of weeks, you've had an opportunity to financially give into the work of Zion Christian Centre in the Philippines. And our dear sister Marilyn is getting on a plane tomorrow and flying tomorrow, aren't you, to the Philippines? Is that right? Do you want to come up, Marilyn, a second? Um, we just want to present you with a financial gift to take back to Zion Christian Centre to bless the work there. Marilyn, a couple of weeks ago, gave you some slides about baptisms, weddings, four weddings and a funeral, and a baptism that happened. So we'd like to present you, Marilyn, from the church family, with love in the name of Jesus, there's five hundred pounds there to take back to Thank your you. to your family in the Thank Philippines you. Thank you. and our extended church family. Yeah. Um, Cole's gonna maybe top it up today because there may yes. be some extra Thank in there. So, so okay. Yes. Would you like to say anything? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. I just want to say thank you so much for your prayer and support to Zion. Since the Zion Basisi said, uh, the church, the River Church has been a part of Zion. Uh, the prayer support and financial support. So thank you. It has been growing and thriving and really praise God for all the things you have supported Zion. So I hope and pray that, uh, you know, there's we have plans like uh, evangelism, uh, we have plans for children's club, we have plans for uh, uh, first time probably in um, Lord's Supper, but it all God's will. It's, it's the Lord's will prepare and plan for everything. Sometimes our plan, it has to be in, in the will of God. So we please pray that all the things that we have planned to be in according to what the Lord has planned. We'll do that right now, shall we? Should we just pray for this lovely lady in the Lord? Yes. Father, we thank you for Marilyn. We thank you for the work that you are building. You're building your church in the Philippines and across the world. Lord, I pray for Marilyn. No flight delays, no l lost luggage, no sickness. Lord, I pray you will command your angels concerning her, that she shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And that, Lord, I just plead your blood, Jesus, over every aspect of this journey. The flying there while she's there on the way home, every conversation, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for your building your church in Zion Christian Center. Lord, we just send her right now from this house with a blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Have a great time. We look forward to hearing what God is doing and will be doing. And another blessing we'd like to bless someone with. You know, the children's workers in this church are phenomenal. And they endure, they're faithful. The preparation that goes into the lessons that take place upstairs on the Sunday morning, which most of us don't see and don't hear. 
But the Lord sees it, and that's the important thing, his dedication to him and to the children's work. Now, as people do it for years and decades even, they feel that sometimes that season is finished, and the Lord is calling them out of that work. So we want to honor our sister, Kim Spring, this morning, who is finished that leg of her journey, her race. And I'm not going to ask her if she wants to come forward and we can just come to you and do it very quietly. So I don't want to embarrass her. But Kim, we want to say that we really appreciate all the hard work that you have done in the children's work. And um, we know... Yeah, can you... Can you now, I know Kim won't like this, but can we stand and clap and honor her? Because we, are, we, we do honor in the name of the Lord. Now remember, we're not clapping Kim. We're clapping what Christ has done through Kim. And her surrender, as we've sang, that she is shown to her king and our king Jesus. So, Kim, this is for you. And we, we send this to you with, with love in the name of Jesus. So thank you again. And may the Lord bless you. And on that note, children, you can go up to your groups. Have a wonderful time. And again, thank you for all the hard work that goes on. Youth are dying today. The preacher's done a runner. Okay. As you know, August is a, a different kind of month. But it's all in your newsletter. And I would draw your attention to the newsletter. This week it's very different. All the birthdays are listed out for the, for the whole of the month. It's my birthday this month. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Uh, yeah, so the newsletter, please. If there's any questions you have on the newsletter, it will tell you what meetings are on during the month of August. Now, the reason I say that is because the building is, I'm going to say this, it's not shut down, but there is a minimal amount of activity happening because there's some essential works that need to take place. Know, the lights don't just turn on. They need electrics and they need to be serviced and the building needs... So the, the building is going to be um, undertaking some essential works and we thank Dave and Kieran for taking that forward so that we can all meet in safety. But just so you're aware, Tuesday nights, set free, 7 p.m. That's happening. Wednesday nights, worship and teaching, 7.30 p.m. It's on the screen. Prayer, prayer and communion, 7.30 and it will say, next Friday is worship without comment. Next Friday is worship without comment, 7.30 p.m. The 19th of April, 19th of April, 19th of August is prayer for Israel. And we are here every Sunday at 11 o'clock. What I'm saying these four is that you keep reminding you of this. I don't want you to turn up to the coffee shop on a Wednesday morning at half past 11 and say, mm, why is it shut? So, Yes. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Wednesday night, 7.30. Friday, 7.30 p.m. Sunday, 11 a.m. Is that clear? We are not shutting down. We are just maintaining the building. And we are doing that because we want to honor God and build a sermon in stone. Which is what we're trying to do. So next Friday is Worship Without Comment. Now, I just need to update you on this. So from September, the September the 1st, Worship Without Comment will move to a Sunday evening and it will be the third Sunday in the month. Plenty of notice for you. We're going to rebadge this as well. We're going to call it Overflow. Now, why are we doing that? Because Worship Without Comment is attached with the word without comment and that is a season that's finished. Now, the reason why we've chosen that phrase is because, let me just stress something. Your bread and butter in church life is Wednesday night teaching, Friday night prayer, Sunday mornings. Sunday evenings is in addition to, not instead of. So the overflow of Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday mornings is the Sunday evening. That's why it's called overflow. Yeah? 
It's what the Bible calls a free will offering. Yep. Clear. Good. Excellent. We're on track. <laughs> Next Saturday morning. So there's a monthly Bible study that John, thank you, Brother John, is taking forward. Um, anyone is welcome. Now, because the building is closed, this is taking place at Tanya's house. Thank you, Tan and Bob, for making your house available. I'm not going to give you the address from the front because this is on YouTube. If you want to know where Tan and Bob live, you can go and ask them. I don't want to put that sort of information out in the public domain. So that's that. Yes, just to let you know, the building will be back up and running on Tuesday, the 6th of September, as normal, after we've done all the electrics, etc. And finally, just some advance notices for September. Don't worry, this is well in advance, but I know many of you like to have it in advance so that you can organize your diaries, because a lot of you are very busy, not just here, but with other things. In September, as you know, we've been doing early morning prayer meetings. They will recommence on Tuesday the 6th of September. That is 6.30 a.m. GMT. That's not a misprint. It is 6.30 a.m. We've had some wonderful times during July. So please, that will be every Tuesday morning throughout September. Sunday the 4th, we're having a recommissioning service. So we'll be praying for those who are heading up certain ministries, just rebooting, refiring people. And just again, honoring like we've done with Kim. And we've kind of come up with a phrase. In fact, Dave came up with this phrase, back to church Sunday. Now, that's not to say you take August off. Because the devil doesn't take August off. You ain't taking August off. Well, I'm trying to advise you not to. But it's for those maybe. So if, you, if the Lord puts someone on your heart that you've not seen here for a long time, it's not just for the leadership to, to, to kind of, oh, how are you? If someone put, reach out to them. We miss you. We love you. Not a get at, but a more of a, we miss you. You're not forgotten. And let's see what the Lord will do. And great evening of worship, Ruth Fazal and Gil Penzak. There you go. 7.30 p.m. That will be an Israel night. And again, I'll give you these in advance. You'll be reminded nearer the time, but it's good to know these things. So you can put them in your diary. Right, we're going to have a song. And then I'm going to hand over to Anna, who's going to bring the word of the Lord. Faith, not fear. Is that right? Amen. So we're going to sing. Whom shall I fear? No one. I fear God. Fear God. No one else. Amen. Father, I want to say thank you for Anna. Lord, I thank you that you have given her the word this morning, Lord. And I just pray that the words of her mouth. And the meditation of her heart will be pleasing in your sight. Father, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Are we all well? Excellent, excellent. Okay. So, I am here today to talk to you about two words. And they are faith. Oh, hang on. This one. Oh. Oh, hang on, we're in the wrong place. There we go. Faith, guess what the next one is? <laughs> and fear. <laughs> yeah, I could sit down. <laughs> Faith and fear, that is the two things I want to talk to us about today. Now, the first thing that I notice when I look at those two words together like that is that they are complete opposite words, aren't they? Faith and fear, like light and darkness or hope and dread. And in a world that is filled with fear and dread, it is imperative that as we as Christians live our lives full of faith. And so what we're going to look at today is how we choose faith over fear every time. How we live our lives filled with um, hope and light rather than living from a place of worry and fear and anxiety. And really, this is simple. We feed our faith, not our fears. So what I want to do, first of all, is look at the two words separately. So we're going to look at the word faith. Now, faith is the ability to believe that God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Faith is a gift from God, isn't it? And uh, 
It's a gift so that we can accomplish wonderful things here on earth and we can show people that God is real. Scripture tells us in Hebrews 11, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. So in other words, faith is the basic ingredient that we need to begin a relationship with God. It's the assurance that the things revealed and promised in his word in the Bible are true, even though they're unseen. And it gives us, the believer, the conviction that what we expect in faith will actually come to pass. Faith also is like a muscle, and so you have to use it and you have to exercise it. It grows with use, but if you don't use it, it also shrinks. And when you live a faith-filled life, then you live a life of peace and trust and joy and rest and confidence, assurance, love, power, and you have a sound mind when you live a life of faith. Now, the word fear, let's look at the word fear together. If you look at the word fear in the dictionary, it says an unpleasant emotion caused by threat of danger, pain, or harm. To be afraid of someone or something as likely to be dangerous, painful, or harmful. And fear is the absence of trust in God in your life. Fear is an emotion, isn't it? And often that irrational feeling that wells up within us that can often completely override every other thing that we're going through, every other feeling that we have. Now, fear is not from God. God specifically tells us in his word that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but rather power, love, and sound mind. And so therefore, fear is an emotion that God doesn't want to overtake us. Why? Because when we fear, it reveals that we're relying on our own efforts and our own strength, and we're not trusting in our Savior, not trusting in his sovereignty and his absolute goodness for our lives. Fear will keep your focus on something else and not on God's truth. So let's look at some fears together. Doubt, worry, rejection, anxiety, panic, confusion, insecurity, failure, dread. Do you know, I used to say that word so much. I am dreading going to work tomorrow. Oh, I'm dreading starting my diet, whatever it may be. But when we speak that word, you are speaking fear over yourselves. Okay, and fear of something bad happening. Often it's more about the what ifs than actually what does happen. We worry about what if this, what if that, and often the thing doesn't even happen. Now, I'm sure some of you might have seen these two before, but I find these really encouraging. So faith, find assurance in trusting him. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Now, here's the thing, and this is what I really want us to understand today. Fear gives the devil access to our lives. And faith gives God access into our lives. So fear is what gives the devil access into our lives. He lies. We know this, don't we? The enemy lies. And if we believe it, then we are being deceived. And what being deceived means is that you believe a lie. And so whatever you believe, even if it's not true, becomes true to you. Now, that's a scary thought, isn't it? False evidence appearing, oh, real. This is exactly how the enemy works. And the greatest defense that we have against the enemy that prowls around us is being aware of the presence of Jesus and calling on his name, and knowing where our true safety lies. We exercise our faith, and we stand firm on the word of God, because Jesus 
is the one who guards our heart and keeps us in perfect peace. And his shield of faith around us is absolutely indestructible. It tells us in Ephesians, doesn't it, in the book of Ephesians, to put on the full armor of God so that we can stand against the devil's schemes. And towards the end of that chapter, it says, in addition to all of this, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. And this is one way how we feed our faith and not our fears. Now, did you know that Jesus tells us that we just need the faith of a mustard seed? But that faith, that tiny little seed, will move mountains. We're going to look at that story in the Bible, and it's Matthew 17, verses 14 to 20. And I'm going to read it to us now. <clears throat> Jesus heals a demon-possessed boy. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon from the boy and it left him. From that moment, the boy was well. Afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Amen. And so what we see is the disciples want to understand what went wrong, why they couldn't cast the demon out. And so that's what they asked Jesus. And at the heart of their failure was their little faith. They either didn't trust the power previously given to them by Jesus. So earlier in the book of Matthew, Jesus gave the disciples authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons and so they either didn't trust the power that jesus had given them or they didn't believe that such power could perhaps be exercised through them but what jesus reveals here is the key to that power is faith in him a tiny mustard seed of faith and they'll be able to tell a mountain to move and it will even a slither of faith in his power and his authority, and nothing will be impossible for them. And it's the same for us today. It's nothing to do with them or their abilities. It was all about Jesus. And it was a powerful and important message for the disciples. And it's a powerful message for us today. There's going to be mountains in our lives, aren't there? There are mountains in our lives, whether it be sickness, financial debt, relationship problems, you name it, whatever it may be. But if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, then nothing is impossible for us. Jesus is saying that without him, we can do nothing, but that with him, because he is working in our lives, then nothing he gives us to do will be impossible. And when we act in the name of Jesus, everything is possible. And the power and authority that we carry doesn't come from our own abilities. It doesn't come from our own goodness, how good we've been or what status we have. It's the Holy Spirit working in us, his power working through us. Like I said earlier, it's all about Jesus, isn't it? But unfortunately, I think sometimes we make it about us. And maybe that's why we don't see miracles happening. But the great thing is, the more we exercise our faith and the more we trust in the power of God, then the more our faith grows. I love the analogy that Jesus uses of a mustard seed. Did you know that a mustard seed is the smallest seed in the plant kingdom? Yet it grows to over 30 foot tall. Mustard seeds are incredibly resilient and adaptable. They grow and thrive in hot conditions. They are the fastest growing garden tree. 
And so this tiny, tiny little mustard seed grows into something much, much bigger than its original size. And so a mustard seed kind of faith is a faith that isn't content just to stay small, but that buries itself in the soil of God's word, takes root and grows and grows and grows and grows. So I thought it'd be good to look at a few ways that we can actually exercise our faith and see our faith grow. So, firstly, we need faith, not just knowing that God could, but actually believing that he would. And what we're going to do, we're going to look at the same passage of scripture that we looked at earlier in Matthew, but we're going to look this time at it in the book of Mark, a different apostle, same story, but it brings the dad, the boy's dad into it more. So it's Mark 9, verses 16 to 27. What is all this arguing about, Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I bought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, You faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion. He fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. I command you come out of this child and never enter him again. The spirit then screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as the people said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, helped him to his feet, and he stood up. <clears throat> Amen. I love it when the dad says, Have mercy on us and help us if you can. And Jesus says, What do you mean if I can? <laughs> Anything is possible if a person believes. Now you may be thinking it's strange, the father's response. He says, I do believe but help me in my unbelief. That doesn't seem to make any sense, does it? And so I had a little Google, because I wanted to make sure what I was saying was right. And the word unbelief in the Greek, which is what the New Testament Bible was written in originally, the Greek word for unbelief here is apista, which literally means distrust. And so when he asks Jesus to help his unbelief, he isn't saying that he doesn't believe. He's asking for more faith. He knew Jesus could heal his son, but he just needed to know the faith to know that he would heal him. He knew Jesus could, but he wanted help with his lack of trust. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think most people in this room know that God can, don't we? But do you believe that God will? It's a lie of the enemy to say that you don't deserve it. You think maybe that God can, but perhaps he won't because you've not been good enough or you haven't read your Bible or you don't deserve it. But this isn't how God works. Don't let the enemy today sow seeds of doubt in your heart over this. God can and he will because of who he is, because of his power, his authority, and because of his goodness. Maybe there's some here today who believe But you need Jesus to help you today with your unbelief or your distrust. You need a little bit more faith and trust that God will. Okay, secondly, we need to take the opportunity God gives us to see faith in action. Now, what do I mean by that? It's not enough just to say that you have faith or that you believe God is God. True faith grows when you let God be God. 
and do what he does best, which is the amazing and the impossible and the supernatural, what we need to do is stop holding on to situations, trying to control them, trying to be in charge of our situations. Faith in action is allowing God into every area of our lives. So we give our children over to him and let God be God. We give our finances over to him and we let God be God. We stop trying to fix broken relationships and let God do it for us. We stop holding grudges and unforgiveness and we let God be allowed to move in our heart. We all know the saying, don't we? Let go and let God. And this is exactly it. It's a perfect way to exercise our faith, to let go and let God, to let go of our situations and to just surrender them to him, to let go of what holds us back, to let go of what brings fear, anxieties, worries to your life, perhaps not knowing what the future might look like for you. We let go of those situations, we give them to God, and we trust him with it. Because this is exactly what God wants us to do anyway. You know, he wants us to be completely dependent upon him in every situation, to trust him with it all. And I can guarantee you, it will only draw you closer to him. It will strengthen your faith because he will never, ever, ever let you down. And thirdly, exercising our faith by reading his word. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And this is one of the main tools we should use to build our faith. The Bible isn't just words. This is God's spirit, his very breath flowing through it. And every time you put the word of God into your heart, then your faith grows. You know, one of Satan's jobs is to make us doubt God and to doubt his word, to doubt his promises. And so he hates it when we live our lives according to his word, when we speak scripture out and when we declare it over ourselves because you more the more you know the word then the more you know god and the deeper your faith will be if you notice that scripture it said faith comes by hearing and for you to hear the word of god it must be spoken and the best person to speak it over yourselves is you so i'm going to give you an example of how we speak faith rather than fear a lady came forward a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago and uh, she came forward for prayer at the end and she said to me, Anna, I am so afraid, I am so anxious, I'm so fearful, I just don't know what to do. And I want you to tell me what you did when you felt like that, going through everything you've just gone through. Now, you know me, I'll be nothing but honest up here and so I'll just share a story. <clears throat> um... Yeah, there's been moments over these past six months that I've really struggled with fear and anxiety. And it's something I've not really experienced before. Um, The week after I had my surgery, I had a huge blood clot come very suddenly. And it was literally growing by the second. And Mark had to rush me down to A&E. And I ended up having emergency surgery in the middle of the night. And the whole thing was actually very scary. The next day I recovered in hospital and then Mark came and picked me up and brought me home. And um, the minute I got in through the door, I just had the most irrational fear come over me. What if that happens again? What if I'm going to die? What if Mark's not around next time it happens and an ambulance can't get to me in time? And I just panicked and panicked and panicked. It was the most awful feeling. I don't think I've ever had a panic attack before, but... It felt like that's what was happening. And so I knew I needed to change my mindset. And so I just started pacing up and down my front room saying, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. The fear felt really real to me, but it was false evidence appearing real because that didn't happen. It was just, what if this? What if that? It was my mind 
playing tricks on me. And so I was declaring and speaking scripture, Jesus is Lord, over myself. And that's how I fed my faith in that situation. Because when you speak out God's word, your mind has no other space to start thinking about what you were thinking about. So that goes and peace just enters your heart. Um, it's a really simple exercise, but it has a real profound effect because it stops that fear instantly. And so what I told the lady who came forward was just that. Speak the name of Jesus over yourself, over your situation, again and again and again and again until that fear goes. Now, I had to do that many times over that season, but that's okay because it worked. Um, yeah. Now, what we need to understand is that we cannot doubt in the darkness what God has spoken to us in the light. Does that make sense? So, yes, they were dark times for me, but I couldn't doubt. Who was I to doubt God's truth, what God had spoken to me and promised me in the light, that all was going to be well, that he had a good plan and purpose for my life, that this illness wasn't going to stop me, and that what the enemy meant for evil, God was going to turn for good. We cannot doubt in the darkness what God has spoken in the light. We cannot rely on our emotions or our feelings to tell us the truth. The truth is here in God's word, and that is what we live our lives upon. Light shatters darkness, and truth shatters doubt. And so we must remember at all times to speak truth over our lives, to speak God's promises over our lives, because every time you declare the word of God out loud from your mouth, the enemy has no choice but has to go. Fear has to go. And so we speak and declare the word of God over ourselves. Find a scripture that works for you, a scripture that God has given to you, and speak it over your life. Now, I know I've shared this analogy before, but I do really like it. When David faced Goliath, he didn't focus on Goliath's size. He didn't focus on how dangerous and how scary Goliath was. He focused on his God. He talked about how great his God was. He didn't talk fear. He talked faith. And it's the same for us today. We don't tell God how big the mountain is that is in front of us that we're trying to get past. We tell the mountain how big our God is. We feed our faith and not our fears in that moment. Because fear can stop us walking in all the fullness and all the promises that God has for our lives if we let it. Now, I'll give you another example of this. I know some of you <clears throat> know this, but a couple of years ago, my biggest fear was standing up here doing exactly this. I used to be petrified of talking in public, of standing up the front, of preaching or leading. No thanks, that's for you. Mark, thanks very much. Not for me, is what I used to say. The fear was felt really real. And um, one day I was on a prayer walk, and I, just me and Jesus, and I was talking to the Lord, and I was telling him all of this. I was telling him how it made me feel, how scared I was, how petrified I was, and um, I didn't know what to do about it because I was really struggling to come up the front and, and share. And in that moment, God gave me a scripture, and he said, Psalm 34, verse 4. Now, I didn't have my Bible on me, and I didn't have my phone on me, and I didn't know what that scripture was. It was very specific. It was an actual verse in a chapter. And so I got home, I rushed home, and I opened my Bible, and this is what it said. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Amen. And it was just the most amazing moment. That was God's promise to me in that moment. He'd heard my cry. He'd heard my concerns. You know, you can bring anything to Jesus, anything at all. If it matters to you, it matters to him. We can bring all our cares and all our concerns to him. And so now what I do when I prepare to stand up here in the moments beforehand, I thank God 
that he answered my prayer and he freed me from my fears. I thank him that his perfect love casts out all fear. And I thank him that those he calls, he equips. It's God that's called me to this, and so therefore he will equip me for it. And all of those three things are scriptural. All of those things are things that God has promised me. And so I speak them out over myself, I remind myself, and I remind God what he says. And then I stand up to preach. <laughs> there is nothing more powerful. And so find a scripture and declare it over, your, over yourself. Feed your faith and speak out his promises over your life. Now, I'm not saying that this is a breeze for me now. I still find it hard. But I'm actively choosing to walk in his purposes for my life. I'm at, at choosing to trust in his plan for my life. If I fed my fear, I wouldn't be up here at all. And so I'm actively choosing to feed my faith and to do what God has called me to do. Now that same scripture in the NIV version says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So how do we seek the Lord? Well, seeking God means focusing on what Jesus did focusing on what God is saying, focusing on what he has done for you. Seeking God is all about focus, shifting our focus to him. Because when you're focused on what Jesus said, fear will leave you. When you focused on who Jesus is, fear will leave you. And when you focus on what Jesus has done for you, all insecurities and all fear leave you. So this is what seeking the Lord means. And so when that fear rises from within, seek the Lord and focus on Jesus. And in that moment, he will deliver you from all your fears. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. That same passage says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? In other words, worrying is completely futile. It brings no good thing to our life, does it? It just robs you of your peace. Psalm 85, verse 8. I listen to God. I listen carefully to what the Lord is saying. So that's not others. It's not ourselves. It's not the enemy. I listen carefully to what the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people. If we listen to God amidst our trials, if we seek his voice above all others, if we actively feed our faith, then God promises us his peace. And one more scripture, Psalm 23. We all know it, don't we? Even though I walk the darkest valley, so that's not just dark, that's the darkest valley, I will not fear. Why? Because Jesus is our shepherd. He is our comforter. He's with us every step of the way. He will not fail us, and his presence is our protection and our guidance. And so a question for us, a question for you, as we come to a close, what are you going to leave behind today in order to step into the promises of God for your life? What fear, be it worry, anxiety, dread, panic, what thing, what trait do you need to get rid of today to walk in all the fullness that God has for you in your life? Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We know, Lord God, that you move in power. We know, Lord God, that it is your heart to set captives free. And I believe, Lord God, that is exactly what you want to do today. You want to set captives free, people who struggle with fear and anxiety, confusion, worry, dread, whatever it may be. Thank you, Lord, that you know each of us by name. Thank you, Lord, that every hair on our head is numbered. You perceive our thoughts from afar. You know every thought before we even say it, Lord God. And I thank you today, Lord, that your perfect love casts out all fear. Thank you, Jesus. 
I'm just going to ask if there's anybody here today that is struggling with anything I've mentioned, any fear, anxiety. I don't want you to come forward. I just want you to stand where you are, to just acknowledge to God that you want to receive his healing today. Maybe you believe, but you need help with your unbelief. You need to trust that God will in your life. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that all authority and power is yours. Thank you, Lord, that when we have a mustard seed of faith, you can do the impossible through us. And so, Father God, I pray for every person standing here today, for every person who struggles with fear. Lord, we reject and we rebuke a spirit of fear that has taken root in their lives. We reject a spirit of confusion, of anxiety, of dread, and of worry. And we accept and we receive from you today a renewal of the mind, a spirit of peace to come, joy and hope, a fresh, renewed hope in you, Jesus, that they will find their rest in you. Father, we know that fear is not from you. And I thank you that your perfect love casts out all fear. And I pray, Lord God, now that your perfect love will fill everybody's hearts and minds, their bodies and their souls today. Father, we plead the precious blood of Jesus over you. I pray for those here, Lord God, who believe but just need that extra bit of help with their unbelief with their distrust and their doubt, that today, Father God, they will believe fully, not only that you can, but that you will in every area of their lives, that they will trust you with a supernatural trust, that they will surrender everything that they hold on to and let go now and let you, God, do it. Father, we give you all glory. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done today in this place. It's all because of you, Jesus. Father, we trust you fully with our lives. We receive now from you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I think we're going to have some worship, aren't we? Do you want to speak? I'm just going to share a quick testimony because sometimes I think we th- maybe you think that the leadership and people that stand up front have got it all together. We don't. That word is as much to me as to Dave, as to Cole, as to Tamba, and Tim, John. You know, at four o'clock this morning, the wind blew and the bedroom door slammed. You know when you leave the window open? And I woke up. And you're in the middle of the night, you know, that thing you don't want to think about. Because you know if you think about it, you're going to stay awake. Yeah, I started thinking about it, the situation, which I'm not going to go into detail. And that very thing came across me, irrational fear. So I'm led in bed thinking, I don't want to think about it, I'm thinking about it. Lord, help me to be still and know that you are God. That, you know, I felt the Lord say, how many times, my son, have I delivered you in the past? And in the roundabout way, my prayer at 4 a.m. this morning was that. Lord, I do believe. Give me faith. Increase my faith. Help me overcome my unbelief. See, we're not, we're not arrived when we're up here. You know? We're still on this journey. That's as much for me as anybody else in this room. So I thank the word of the Lord has come this morning. And the Lord has spoken to my heart. And spoke about a situation four and a half hours ago. No, eight and a half hours ago. Praise God. It's just a testimony. It's not adding to what Anna said. It's a testimony. That has pierced my heart. And answered my cry at four o'clock this morning. You can relate to that, some of you, can't you? Yeah, you're nodding. Praise God. Well, I speak Jesus. And I think the other one we're going to sing is a very, very good song. It's been written recently. I will trust my Savior Jesus. Beautiful song. Kieran, if you need prayer, we're always here. You know that. God bless you all. You're wonderful people. And I pray you will respond in faith.
to the word of the Lord and give all your anxieties to him. Thanks again, Anna. Thank you to Kieran and all those involved this morning that make church happen. God bless you all. Jesus is Lord. Amen.